the components of making a great boxer, well, first and foremost, you have to have the belief. Bernard Hopkins says boxing is 90% mental. I don't know if it's 90, but it's pretty close, if not. This sport is more like a marathon, you know, than a sprint. You know, it, it, it's, not, it's not the ones who start out the fastest, but it's the ones who stick with it and keep grinding it out and keep chipping it away. My name is Gerald Washington. I'm a professional fighter. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. I grew up in Vallejo, California, and I've been in Southern California since uh, 2001. Uh, I used to go to an after-school program at the Omega Boys and Girls Club in Vallejo, California. Uh, working with kids is, um, and being a role model to them is very important to me. Um, I've always worked with kids. I, I, when I was in high school, I worked at an after-school program. And uh, after I got graduated from college, I worked with the Sheriff's uh, Youth Foundation. I see how important it is to kids to have somebody to look up to, somebody that they can, that can admire and, and they can see that it can be done. My father actually gave me the nickname The Gentleman. Gentleman Jim Corbin, he told me about a fighter in San Francisco with that name that represented the Bay Area. He was a heavyweight champion a long time ago. And El Gallo Negro is something that represents my Mexican side of my family. And uh, it's a symbolic because it's a, it's a fighting rooster. And uh, it's kind of like boxing. My favorite fighter of all time is Lennox Lewis, but always uh, give him respect and, and honor to Muhammad Ali. Just for, for everything that he represented as far as a human being and in, in, in the sport. I think boxing has evolved a lot since I've been involved with it and over the many hundreds of years that it's been in, in existence. It started, you know, it will bare knuckles and, and no gloves, you know, when boxing first started. And, and now we're to a point where it's, it's really a science. It's a sport that uh, you can't cheat. There's no shortcuts in this sport. You have to start from the bottom and you have to take your time and you have to develop as a fighter, you have to de develop every skill along the way. Your life is on the line, you know, when you're in the ring. It, 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 you're putting your life on the line every time you get in the ring, and it's, that's very hard enough by itself. You can't just come in thinking you're gonna be some kind of knockout artist, because that's how people get uh, hurt. I mean, you can have that mentality, but you have to be a student of the game. You have to, you have to devote your heart to this and, and, and your mind and, and your soul and your body and everything. You have, to, you have to put it all out on the line if you want to be good. Becoming someone's boxing trainer uh, is a different process for every you know, fighter. There's no A plus, a plus B equals C, if you will. But the relationship that Gerald and I cultivated, it happened pretty organically. We met in 2009, we were friends. He was just getting back into boxing. I always say when I first met Gerald, he was like a tornado. He just wants to wreck everything in his path, uh, however he can. Now he's, he's really turned into a, a really, really scientific boxer, very smart. You know, here you have a guy who, uh, he speaks two languages. He's um, graduated from a, a high prestigious school in USC. He's done a, a, a whole um, cycle in the Navy. He's been around the world. He's, um, he's very, uh, which is seasoned as a person. My record right now is 17-0 uh, with one draw. I'm ranked in the top 15 for, a, for some of the, the sanctioning bodies. My goals for my career are to be focused and, and improve daily. We're getting close to a title shot here soon. The way it works is you just kind of work your way through the ranks. You know, you win fights, you beat other ranked opponents, and once you become ranked in the top 15 in one of those sanctioning bodies, now you can be picked by the champion, the current champion, to fight for his belt. You know, and what they, they call those are voluntary defenses. Now, I, I, each one has a little bit different rules, but they get X amount of voluntary defenses per year, and then they have mandatory defenses. Once you're the number one contender, meaning you kind of, you know, you beat most of those guys that are ranked and you worked your way to the top of that list, then you're a mandatory defense, and they have to have X amount of those per year as well. So. Anybody in the 15 can typically fight for a, one of the belts, but once you're the number one contender, they have no choice but to fight you. He's cracking the elite division of, of fighters right now. And for someone who really hasn't been doing this all that long, because he boxed as a kid, you know, he had about a dozen amateur fights when he was like 12 or 13 years old, and then he didn't box again all the way till he was like 26, 27 years old. So, you know, he's been back at boxing uh, seven, eight years, he, he, he's really done a lot already. Our training routine uh, consists of a pretty normal boxing workouts. It's my passion. I'm in here 
every day from Monday through Saturday. We're really big on shadow boxing to practice our balance and precision and technique. We do a lot of bag work, we do a lot of um, you know, pad work and mitt work with myself. Uh, we do running during the week, we do sparring. You know, we do typical boxing things like hit the speed bag, double end bag, timing, speed, and eye coordination. Um, we do some strength and conditioning training, a lot of core work, with big in boxing. They call me the nice guy because, you know, I, I just, uh, it's hard for me to, to, to bring any anger to this game. I love this game. I love this game. I look at it as a, as a, as a, as, as, as having fun. I'm excited to get in the ring. It's always been, uh, it's always been my passion. I just enjoy, you know, playing the game of tag with the other guy. The road is very difficult to get to a title match because we've been going down the road now for, you know, since 2009, if you will, you know. So it's been a long road and it's very difficult. There's ups, there's downs, there's hard work, there's sacrifice, there's missing out on a lot of things. But hey, here's the other thing. It's a lot of fun as well because we wake up and we do something we enjoy every day. To be the next heavyweight champion is gonna take a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, focus. It's gonna take a lot of heart. It's gonna take a good, a good team. It's gonna take support. Like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. It's the same thing for a boxer to be, to be great. You have to be able to depend on your trainer and, and, and your cut man and, and everybody that's on your team. It's vital to have a good trainer. Um, without the proper uh, guidance, it's, it's very, very difficult to reach your uh, maximum potential. I always say a, a champion is, is born and then guided. Um, but you have, to be, you have to be like a student of the game. You have to really uh, focus, pay attention to your mistakes, correct your mistakes, and make sure that they don't continue to happen. If you have to continue to grow daily, it's a, it's a constant battle and just continue to get better daily. That way uh, we can compete amongst the highest level because people all over the world, they're, they're working so hard day and night. So you have to be able to, you have to bring that same energy and that same focus to be successful. That's the biggest thing is the mentality and the belief in yourself and the, and the mental fortitude and character. That is, that is everything. You know, even Muhammad Ali says, you have to have skill, but the will has to be greater than the skill.